I've talked about scams all the time, and for the most part, usually once you know what to look for in a particular scam, it's easy to spot, but that's not always the case. And recently, a more sophisticated scam has actually gotten way more popular to the point where the FBI just recently released a warning about it. Now, even though it's not literally new, it's become so much more common than before, even in just the last year, that it's gonna be new to most people who might not even know it's a thing. And even for those of us who are just naturally suspicious of these kinds of things, it is still hard to spot. There's different variations, but the scam generally involves a scammer taking over a actual legitimate email account for a business or an organization, which then allows them to send out really legitimate looking scam emails. And if the email itself is crafted right, and even if someone goes to look at the sender, checks the domain, it will appear completely legitimate. So in this video, we'll go over more info about these scams, some examples, and how to potentially spot these so you're more aware of them, which is gonna be extremely important because the more sophisticated the scam is, that means they're more likely to be able to get victims. And because it is tough to pull off, then the scammers are going to want to go for bigger steals, you might say. So if they do get you, it's gonna be a lot more than usual. Speaking of being protected from threats though, before we jump in, I want to thank today's sponsor, Gar Guardio. Guardio is a browser extension that provides real-time protection from all sorts of threats while browsing the web, even unexpected places like Google search result ads. For example, it blocks malicious sites using more than just blacklists, but also uses in-house developed methods for detecting phishing and malware sites and more. And yes, this includes links clicked from emails. And that's all before the threats even have a chance to do any harm. It also scans your other browser extensions and alerts you if there are any disguised malicious extensions installed. And for websites that generate shady notifications after tricking you to enable them, Guardio will trace the actual source of these notifications and eliminate them. Plus, there are other features such as information leak monitoring, which like I've mentioned in the past happens way more than you think and search hijack correction if any sites attempt to change your browser settings without your permission. Guardio also blocks other scam related sites like those involving crypto scams that steal your wallet info and even blocks sites used in scams that try to have you install remote desktop software for malicious purposes. You can scan your browser for threats for free by visiting guard.io slash theojo and installing the extension. And you'll also get a seven day free trial to the premium features such as real-time threat removal. So if you want a clean and secure browsing experience, again, go to guard.io slash theojo, link in the description, and check out their affordable premium plan for full protection. And with all that being said, Let's continue. Now, the actual name of this scam that the FBI is warning about is called business email compromise. And it usually is pretty targeted, actually. So the scammers will try to compromise a legitimate email account, like I said, usually though of a higher ranking person, like an executive or some department with authority, like accounting or payroll or something that is less likely going to get pushback or questioning for requests. So it may just be an individual email account for one person at the company or a more general one used by the whole business. After they do compromise a targeted account, there are several methods they may use to gather whatever they want. The first thing they might do is what's called a transfer of funds request, which is basically just fancy talk for straight up stealing money. I'll go over this in more detail in a second so you'll be able to spot potential red flags, but there aren't gonna be as many as you might think. Other than stealing money though, they may try to steal information such as personal identifying information to steal identities. For example, they could request a W-2 tax form from someone. And for example, if they're pretending to be the accounting department and actually emailing from that, that might not raise any flags at all. Going back to the transfer of funds method though, this is gonna take probably one of two forms. Both of them are going to involve stealing money from the person. It's just gonna change where the money is initially sent. And this is maybe easier than you might think. For example, if they steal the account for an executive, for example, it could be as easy as sending an email to the accounting department and saying, hey, we got some work done by this freelancer and here's their invoice. Can you be sure to pay that invoice for them as soon as possible? And here's the payment details. And then the accounting department, they may get that all the time, not even think twice before sending the money. As for how these scammers receive the money, the FBI described two different possibilities. One is a direct transfer and the other one is a second hop transfer. In a direct transfer, from my understanding, 
understanding, the scammer directly just sets up some kind of account, probably at a crypto exchange that doesn't really request that much personal information so they can set it up easily. And then the payment details go to that crypto account where the person probably pre-arranged to say that they're going to deposit to that crypto account. So when it comes wired in, it goes into that person's account where they instantly convert it into crypto, move it away, and then it's gone. In the second hop transfer method though, there's an extra step first, where at the beginning, the scammer will actually steal some personal information from another victim, maybe even using the method that I described before. Then they'll use that information to set up either a bank account or a crypto account in that first victim's name, but they won't know about that. The scammer will actually control it, and it adds another layer between the scammer and the victims. Then the scammer will have the second victim send the payment into this newly created account that the scammer controls, but is not under their name, and then they can again do whatever they want with it. And this can seriously happen to anyone because of the wide variety of forms it may appear as. And one real life example that you might be able to learn from is Linus from Linus Tech Tips actually was nearly scammed out of 90,000 Canadian dollars. He did actually end up sending the money, but fortunately was able to recover it. Now he made a whole video talking about this in more detail. I'll have it pop out, I recommend watching it. But the quick summary is basically, he had been working already on his new house with a landscaper doing work. And the scammer had apparently hacked into the company, the landscaping company, and for a long time was just observing, not sending out any scam emails, and learning the ins and outs of that company, and eventually sent emails to all the customers and basically made a extremely plausible offer. They said, hey, if you prepay the full amount that you're gonna pay in the next six months or whatever for the upcoming work, then we'll give you a discount. And that again, seems extremely reasonable because they're already having work done, they're already paying this company, and all they're saying is, hey, if you pay early, we'll give you a discount almost no alarm bells would be ringing there. And he said that they specifically were talking in the style and tone of the original employees that they were impersonating. And they were even using company letterhead, stuff like that. So it was very sophisticated. And to be clear, these emails were legitimately coming from the company's email servers and domain, but they were being diverted to the scammers instead of the company. So you wouldn't have just known necessarily looking at this unless you actually specifically called them up and asked about it, you would never know. And eventually they had him wire the money to a Canadian bank. Again, might not raise any red flags. It's not like it's going to Nigeria or anything. Now, fortunately, soon after they actually did wire the money, the company let them know that this happened. They found out about it and Linus did contact the police who he says basically weren't able to help at all. They were almost useless and the only reason he was able to get that bank account frozen and he did get his money back was because he had connections from just being in the YouTube media space. So a normal person apparently would not have had any help from the authorities and he just happened to luck out and get his money back. But for a normal person, that probably wouldn't have happened. Now, another very recent example is a hack of the National Health Service in the United Kingdom, NHS. They had over 130 legitimate email accounts hacked that were used to send out phishing emails. Apparently this started happening as early as October 2021 and they only found out about it in April of this year and it allowed them to send emails from legitimate NHS domains that did pass authentication. Now you might be wondering how this was able to go on for so long since October with nobody noticing and the reason is they kept a very low profile. So apparently they only sent out just over a thousand scam emails in those several months and most of them were in the last month before they were discovered. So it's not like they were sending out too many, though when they did start ramping it up, that is when they were discovered. So what they were probably doing at first was just using the few accounts they had, or maybe just one account, to gradually increase the number they had, and then to eventually send out a mass campaign to a bunch of people, which seems like is what they did, but they still only seem to send out around a thousand emails. So I wouldn't call that an extremely successful campaign, but still, it could have been way worse. Now the techniques the scammers used in this campaign mostly were fake new document notifications. So they were saying like, oh, you got a new document from Adobe or whatever, and then 
it would take you to a credential stealing website to log in to view this document. And the emails looked reasonably real, especially if they were coming from a legitimate domain. You might not have known, especially not anyone who's very tech literate. Though later on, they did become much more obvious, claiming to be from Jeff Bezos giving out millions of dollars. So I don't know if that was a completely separate scammer that came in and just kind of ruined it for the original ones, or if they just decided to send out these more obvious ones. I don't know, very strange, but still goes to show you don't really know what's gonna happen with these. So what can you do to protect against these types of scams? Well, the first line of defense for any email scams, again, is to kind of look at the email domain. And if it's not legitimate, then you know right away that it is a scam. You don't even have to think about it further. However, knowing now though, that there could be scams even coming from legitimate domains and even legitimate people that you know of and their actual email address, the main thing you kind of have to do is just be conscious of not typical requests I would say, from people especially involving money. Another specific real life example of this was actually posted on Reddit a while ago, and it basically had where the executive email account was hacked and sent to this employee who posted on Reddit, basically saying, hey, we're gonna be giving out bonuses to the employees this year for Christmas, and can you just go down to the store and buy a few gift cards for everyone. And even though this was unusual, it still is within the realm of being reasonable. Fortunately though, this person did go and ask that person in real life or over the phone, and they said, no, I didn't do this. So they were able to avoid the scam. So that is one thing you can do if you receive a request that might not even seem weird, but it just has never happened before, then it might be worth it or definitely is worth it to either pick up the phone or walk down the hall, depending on the situation, and speak to the person and say, hey, just double checking, you actually sent this, right? And if you're worried about seeming dumb or silly for asking if this person actually sent the real email, which you shouldn't be, but if you are, what you could always do is call the person again and ask some question about the request. For example, if they request a W-2 form, you could call them up and say, oh, do you want a hard copy of that as well? And if they say, what are you talking about? Well, there you go. So as is usual, there's no hard, fast, guaranteed rule for how to prevent these. The main defense is simply knowing about them. And if you watched it this far, then obviously you are gonna be more prepared than most people, and you can be on a watch for this, especially in the coming years where this is probably gonna become much more common. Thanks again to Guardio for sponsoring this video. Again, be sure to check out guard.io slash theojo, where you can install their extension and scan your browser for threats for free. And that link will also be in the description. So let me know what you think down in the comments. If you've come across this scam before, be sure to tell your story so others can watch out for it. If you wanna keep watching, the next video I'd recommend is a ultimate guide for spotting spoofed emails I made a while ago. It won't tell you how to necessarily spot every scam, but it'll at least tell you how to spot if an email itself is fake. So you can just click that right there. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.